Hi everybody, Fintan here from Dams and Cloud, and this week I want to talk about the plans or tiers that are available for customers on Google Workspace. Now, previously, um, Google had uh, plans that were called G Suite. So G Suite was the primary name for its workspace or productivity tool set. And in November of 2020, they rebranded those to Google Workspace. But they also launched several additional tiers. And as a consequence of that, Google is also competing much more heavily now than it used to be 10 years ago with Microsoft. And it's really brought its productivity suite in line with um, the tiers that Microsoft has as well. So previously we had uh, G Suite Basic, G Suite Business and G Suite Enterprise. There were three tiers and it was kind of relatively easy for customers to decide um, which plan that they um, would go for because there was only kind of the, the three. Now, it is more complicated in terms of the number of plans that are now available. There's now uh, seven plans in total. However, um, there is more choice and that does allow customers to have a more um, bespoke setup maybe for their Google Workspace environment. And that is actually very, very valuable because it can allow customers to be more specific about the actual requirements that they have, and in many cases actually save money or not pay for features that they're not actually using. So what I'd like to do today is to go into what are the different um, Google Workspace tiers, because I think a lot of people don't actually realize how many are available, um, and just talk about the differences between them, and maybe what, uh, what areas you should look at or what choices you need to make uh, in order to decide which tier or plan is best for you. Uh, sometimes Google also call them SKUs or in the industry, they're sometimes called SKUs or SKUs. Um, but for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna be calling them plans or tiers. Now, when you go to Google's website, you're going to see four tiers available. You're gonna see Business Starter, Business Standard, Business Plus, and then you're just gonna see Enterprise as a single tier almost on its own. Whereas there's actually uh, two or technically three tiers within the enterprise space. Um, but again, we're going to break that down into much more detail. So what does Damson show you? Well, on our website, we show you a lot more and it, it actually is much more valuable probably, ironically, to go to uh, a partner website where partners often will break down in more detail um, the different tiers. And certainly on our own site, we've got Business Starter Standard Plus, and then we've also got Enterprise Standard and Enterprise Plus. Uh, and I'm also gonna be talking about two additional plans, um, Enterprise Essentials and Frontline Worker, which is a relatively new plan. You might have previously known that as Deskless Worker. Um, and I think what's interesting, I'm not gonna go into any detail here, but when we look at Microsoft's plans, we can see that they actually break them down pretty similar. So they've got Microsoft 365 Basic, Standard, and Premium. Um, they've also got their Microsoft 365 Apps, which is their sort of standalone um, OneDrive and SharePoint. And again, micro, uh, Google have a competing product for this now. And then in their enterprise base, they've got E3, E5, and, and F3. And, you know, it's interesting because like I said, Google and Microsoft are really on par now in terms of their plans. And that actually makes it easier for customers to compare. So if you're a, co a customer coming from Microsoft, you can now more easily compare the plans because they're, they're kind of like for like now, which is useful. Okay, so as I said, when you go to our page, you're going to see uh, Business Starter, Business Standard, and Business Plus, and then you're gonna see Enterprise Standard and Enterprise Plus. And for most customers, these five plans are all that you have to think about. I'm gonna talk about the wor Workspace uh, Enterprise Essentials and the Frontline Worker afterwards, but for most people, this is where you're gonna sit, okay? And you're gonna be deciding between, am I in the business side of things or am I in the enterprise side of things? And there's probably only a few questions that you have to ask yourself really um, in order to decide where you kind of sit within that. The business starter is four pounds 60 per user per month or five euros 20 per user per month. The business standard is nine pounds 20 um, or 10 euros 40, so about twice the price. Um, and then Business Plus is £13.80 or €15.60 per user per month. So we're seeing about a 50% uh, increase 
uh, there from the previous one not not quite as much as the jump from starter to standard so the the jumps kind of get a little bit smaller which is interesting then from business plus to enterprise standard i find this quite interesting the uh, again the euro 1560 for the business plus and 1730 for the enterprise standard so as a percentage that's actually quite small it's only about 20 or 30 percent uh, forgive me there i'm doing that maths in my head so a very small jump there to actually move to the enterprise SKU. And there's a couple of reasons for that that we'll go into in detail later on. And then quite a big jump to the next one, which is Enterprise Plus, really for customers that only need very, very high levels of security or 26 euros per user per, per month. So quite a jump there. Um, again, nearly 50% um, in, in most cases or more than 50%. So it's interesting to kind of see that and, and just to go over the pricing first and it will make sense then when we kind of dive into the different ones. Often customers are between Business Plus and Enterprise Standard, maybe because of a couple of features. And the Enterprise Standard is really aimed at those customers that have above 300 employees because there is a limit. And that's probably the first key difference to mention that um, on the Enterprise plans, there's no limit in terms of the number of users, whereas in the business ones, there's a limit of 300 um, users or employees. Okay, so let's take a look at the um, business workspace plans first. The business starter plan um, is really designed for very, very small organizations. For companies with less than 10 employees, um, you know, you've got things like 100 participants in a Google Meet, you've only got 30 gigs worth of storage, and you've got very, very limited uh, security and compliance uh, tools within that. So it's really designed for, for very, very small or um, organizations. Business Standard and Business Plus, on the other hand, are, are different. The reason you would upgrade to Business Standard, I, we really feel that most customers should be on at least Business Standard um, because it, you, you have uh, shared drives, which is one of the key um, upgrades that you kind of get. You get two terabytes of storage per user. Also, the storage per user moves from being individualized to that user in the 30 gig one to actually being pooled amongst everybody. So that means if you have 10 users, business standard, then you're going to have 20 terabytes of storage pooled amongst everybody for Gmail and Drive. So it really make, just makes a lot of sense for most customers um, to be on, on business standard. And then the business standard also has 150 participants uh, for Google Meet and you've got Google Meet recording as well built in and then things like breakout rooms as well. So it really makes a lot of sense um, for customers to be um, within that uh, business standard plan. Then we move up to Business Plus. And Business Plus, um, again, we've got less of a jump uh, to the next level. You've now got 250 participants in a Google Meet, which is actually the highest you can have without moving to what's called uh, streaming, which we're gonna talk about later on. You've also got Google Vault for e-discovery. So now you have e-discovery built into your plan as well. You've got five terabytes of storage per user. Again, that's pooled. So for customers that maybe have a requirement uh, for additional storage, this is often where they would go or the reason that they would move uh, to the enterprise to the Business Plus plan. And next we move into the enterprise uh, suite. Why would someone move up to that enterprise standard level? So the first one, as I mentioned earlier on, is the 300 user limit. So if you've got an organization that's above 300 users, then you're going to be forced onto the enterprise standard plan. And the enterprise suite, um, you know, we've got things like um, attendance tracking. We've obviously got the recording, the stuff that we had in the previous plans. We've obviously got e-discovery, all that kind of stuff. But now we have as much storage as you need. So unlimited storage within these. We've also got DLP or data loss prevention features and some endpoint management uh, for devices as well. And we've also got the in-domain live streaming that I mentioned. You can stream within Enterprise Standard up to um, 10,000 uh, people. And then in Enterprise Plus, it moves up to 100,000. In Enterprise Plus now, we've got S-MIME encryption. We've got noise cancellation. We've used the noise cancellation um, ourselves, and it is excellent. Um, and you've also got uh, the same unlimited storage, and you have advanced DLP features and premium support. The other major one is data regions. So data regions 
allows you to choose where your Google data is actually held. Do you want it held in Europe or the United States or in one of the other regions that Google has available? And so um, for a lot of customers that are in the enterprise space, they may upgrade simply for data regions or for some of the high-end encryption and data loss prevention features. And then the last one on this is around the live streaming. So you actually have this feature called live streaming, which allows you to live stream. Currently, it's only available internally. I know there's been um, all customers have been asking, are, are Google going to make it external? And I you know, believe that's something that they're thinking about. And so the streaming allows you to have like a YouTube stream, so a separate link that those people will go to and they can watch and um, you know, engage with, with, with that maybe through a Q&A type setup. Um, and then up to 250 people can actually participate or present within the meeting. And so having that delineation is really valuable because you know, you've got people who are going to be viewers and people who are going to be sort of participants. Um, and within enterprise standard, that's up to 10,000 people. And then, as I said, in the plus, it moves up to 100,000. There's also some really, really interesting features um, around the security where you can actually do sandboxing. Um, within the uh, Enterprise Plus and sandboxing, you know, particularly interesting at the moment with ransomware, it will actually set up a sandbox environment, a virtual environment for every single attachment that's sent into the business. And it will open that attachment and see if it's a ransomware file or if it's um, malware uh, before it's that, that attachment is delivered uh, to an employee's inbox. So they're the types of security features that are actually available uh, within Enterprise Plus. You've also got features like um, Google Security Center. So the secu Security Center gives a single pane of glass for the administrators um, within the business to see what's going on from a security point of view, to notice threats or you know, data loss prevention um, um, alerts and take actions on those within the actual Security Center itself. Um, and then the two additional plans that I, I'm going to mention are the frontline worker and then enterprise essentials. So I might cover enterprise essentials first because it sort of fits within that skew of enterprise plans. It's the sort of third enterprise plan. The reason I don't put it in with the others is that it's basically the first time Google have taken um, one or, a, or a, a small handful of their products, it was originally just kind of one or two, and sold them separately. So it's really for Microsoft users, shockingly, um, who are happy with their Microsoft email and calendar and, and Outlook environment, but they're looking for a collaborative inbox. Often you'll find um, Office 365 customers are frustrated uh, with their OneDrive or their SharePoint environment, and this allows them to, to essentially buy Enterprise Essentials, and this has Google Drive and Google Meet and Chat and Sites and the sort of collaborative part of Google as a standalone product. And it's, it's a lot cheaper. Uh, it's only about six or seven uh, uh, euros per, per user per, per month. Um, and you've got two terabytes of pool storage and all the security stuff. So it's useful for companies that are really on the Microsoft side and want to experience some of the collaborative um, features of Google, but don't want to really move their email or calendar side of things. Um, so we've seen quite a, a, an interesting uptake of, of customers on that. One interesting thing I will say about Enterprise Essentials, if you upgrade from Enterprise Essentials to any of the other plans or SKUs, you can never downgrade. It's not possible to move um, from one of the other plans back down to Enterprise Essentials. So that's very, very important uh, for people to bear in mind. Now, the next one I want to cover is the frontline worker SKU. And we covered this uh, again in detail in a previous video, which we'll link to if people are interested. There is some criteria, so it's not for everybody. Only certain organizations and certain um, teams within organizations that are considered frontline or deskless workers that are primarily viewing content. So consuming content rather than actually creating content. They can create content, um, but that the idea is that they're primarily on their sort of mobile devices and they're, they're consuming uh, information rather than creating. So within this, you've got email, you've got Google Meet, you've got Calendar, you've got all the docs uh, and Drive, two gigabytes of storage per user, all of the sort of enterprise level features. That's what's interesting about it because the price point is, is the same um, or a little bit cheaper than Business Starter, 
but I think it's actually the same as Business Starter, sorry, $5 per user uh, per month. But you get all of the advanced endpoint management um, and security and drive audit logs that you don't get within uh, the Business Starter. So it's really aimed for like retail customers or any company that has a sort of frontline worker staff, which is why obviously at the moment why Google are calling it that. Um, and they have a set of users maybe that, now there are ways that you can kind of mix and match. There's, there's something called PDL or partial domain licensing that actually allows customers to have a mix of different licenses, which you didn't used to be able to do. And that is again, something that's very valuable with the new plans. Um, there are some limitations, like if you're on uh, enterprise, you have to have a minimum of a hundred or a percentage of your domain on enterprise and then you can get some users then on the on some of the business plans where customers tend to use this partial domain licensing is in cases where they might have for example a customer care team uh, or customer support team that doesn't require all of the features um, within the the full enterprise suite so it is it is quite useful but i would caveat that it can come with its own complications because you now have multiple users on your um, account with different settings and different features available to them. Now, there is one other area that, that I wanted uh, to mention, and these aren't really plans or SKUs, but it's just something to be aware of. There's now the ability to add an archived user, okay, within Google, and the archived user is for an offboarding methodology, basically for organizations, when an employee leaves the business, what do I do with this license? If I'm on Enterprise Plus, do I really want to be paying 26 euros or 23 pounds per user per month for this license or indeed on, on many of the other plans? So if you're on Business Plus, Enterprise Standard or Enterprise Plus, you can now buy an archived user license. And these um, will allow you to remove the license, not the user, remove the license from the user. So Finton's left the business, you remove the license from um, his, en his enterprise license from his account and you apply the archived user and it's much, much cheaper. So uh, I'll just quote these in Euro because it's probably a little bit easier. So for business plus users, the archive um, account costs three euros 50. For Enterprise Standard, it's four euros 40, and then for Enterprise Plus, it's six euros. So it's a little bit of a scale there, but basically what that means is, like I said, you could apply a much cheaper license instead of paying 26 quid um, euros per user per month for my account now, you're only paying six, and you can take that license that was originally mine, because uh, I've left the company, and you could apply it to the new person that's coming in. So you can reuse that. Um, and so the archived user gives co companies an offboarding process. And so a, a company might have, for example, a thousand enterprise licenses. They might have, you know, 50 or 100 archive licenses that they are applying to people as they're leaving the business. They might keep them for a period of time because of compliance. So six months, a year, two years, depending on, you know, the industry that they're in and the offboarding process that they have. And then they might back up that data somewhere else or they might already have a cloud backup in place. So that's it for me, guys. I hope you enjoyed this update on the Google Workspace uh, plans or tiers. As I said, it's a lot more complicated now within the Google Workspace uh, world, but that also means that there's much more choice and flexibility, which I think is the really important thing to take away from this. Have a look back through the video. Think about what um, requirements you might have as a business. Is it security? Is it storage? Is it things like shared drives or Google Meet? And they will help you to narrow down the choices of what plan makes sense for your organization or business. And if you're still not sure, please reach out to us and we'll help you make that an informed decision because that's really what we want our customers to do is to make an informed decision. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please put them um, in the comments below. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button here or here. Um, and if you're on LinkedIn or Twitter or Instagram or Facebook, please follow us on there as well. I will see you guys next week.